Hey everyone, this is part 5 of creating a model view controller or an MVC from scratch with PHP. So everything's working now. We have our layouts, we can get our variables in our views, we can do all this stuff. But one of the things that our framework's really missing is that in model view controllers, generally what happens is that when you have a controller, so in our case, welcome controller, you could normally access it by going to something like welcome. And that would load the welcome and index the welcome controller with the index action. So what we want to do is we want to add this this functionality into our own framework. We want to be able to go to welcome and get our welcome controller, uh, because right now we're limited to having to go to our roots and we're, we have to go and specify every single thing. We have to say map get when you go to welcome. We want to load the welcome index. And you, it just would just get really old trying to type all that in every single time. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go and we're going to change the way our, our thing works or our framework works. So uh, we're going to go and to Sammy and Sammy has this function called run and what run does is the very last thing that Sammy does. You're supposed to run it after the whole framework or after the whole class does everything it does. So we need to go and add this run function to our thing. So we'll just go to core and we're going to come down to the bottom and just say Sammy run. And if we reload, you can see we get root not defined. And that's exactly what we want because now we get somewhat of a 404 error message. Because if we jump over to Sammy, we can see right here that this function runs. And if it hasn't found a root, then it runs this. So that's what we want because that means that welcome has not been defined in our roots. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this information right here and see if we're able to load a controller in action. So what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to just plug it straight in to our router dispatch function. Because you can see our router goes ahead and explodes at the hash and it finds from the path. So you know our path normally looks like controller action. So we just need to recreate that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function and we're going to make this static called pre-dispatch. And what we'll do with this is we'll be able to go ahead and figure out what our root is. So um, what we'll do here is inside of Sammy, we're just going to change this bit to map pre-dispatch. And what we'll do here is we're just going to pass in. We're going to say Sammy or this. Um, it'll probably be fine if we run it by this. We'll just say this, get URI, and we're going to pass false through here. So what this does is if I go to find this get URI function, we don't want the prefix slash. And it's going to get this whole URL for us. So uh, pre-dispatch, we're passing the whole URL to the function. And if we go into our router and we get our path up here, or our URI, and we echo up our URI. Um, okay, we don't, we can't do that. So what we'll do instead is we're just going to say Sammy equals Sammy instance. And uh, we're just going to pass Sammy right here. Welcome. Okay. So this is the way that the guy has created Sammy. I mean, it's brilliant coding. Um, basically, this one instance gets changed every single time you run any of these functions because they're always running off this instance variable. And it's just kind of complicated. I don't want to try to go explain it, but I'm, it's very impressive what he's done. But uh, you can see that's actually how he creates his Sammy variable. And that's how I did it here, and I got that because that's how he does it in like every single function that he uses it. Uh, when you find it, he always says Sammy instance, as he does right here. And you can probably find it somewhere else, maybe. Anyway, so that's how we're going to do it. We get Sammy. We're able to get this URI. So uh, now we actually know what the URL is. And this is changing, so it's actually coming from our router. So we're done with this file. It's coming from our router and our get echo URI. We can go to forward slash index, and you can see we get that whole URL. So what you're probably noticing already is that we have our welcome and we have our index. So, or we have our controller and our action. We just need to replace this with a hash, and we could just run this function and automatically do it all for us. So uh, what we're going to do is now what we're going to do 
is we're going to go ahead and split this path up. So we'll say path equals, and we're going to explode our URI at the uh, forward slash. So if we go ahead and debug our path, you can see that we get our welcome and our index. So by default, we want to make it where it automatically loads this index action. So let's go ahead and kind of program it for that specifically. So uh, right now we're getting our controller, so let's go ahead and put that in. We'll just say our controller equals, and here we'll just put in our controller, I'm sorry, our path zero. And we're going to set our action equal to, and here we're going to check if that path variable one is empty. And if it is empty, we're going to make it equal to index. So if it doesn't, if it's not there, then by default we'll use index. Uh, but if it is there, then we're going to go ahead and set it to path one. So here, if I go ahead and echo out our controller and action, you can see we get welcome index, and it put the hash right there. So uh, that's we've pretty much recreated our self path variable that we would normally get. So what we could do here is we could say that our uh, self path equals, and here we could put our controller, and action. And uh, if we said self dispatch, and we passed in the parameter for HTML up here because it needs that format, and reload, you can see that we loaded our welcome index action. So that's working. I mean, that's it's not too hard to get up and running with this. Uh, but the thing that we want to do is we want to be able to set it up where you could go to welcome index.html and get a different view here or the get the, the JSON format. Uh, but you can see here that it's trying to load an index.html action. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say if not empty or if, if the action, let's do it like this. We'll say if preg match and what we're going to look for is this is a regular expression we're going to look for word characters but then we're going to look for at the very end of it a dot with some more word characters which actually we'll put the dot here and then we'll make it where we get those word characters longer okay and we're going to look for that in the action and we'll just put our matches in a variable so let's debug the matches and see if we got anything. And you can see that um, that's fine. We're just looking for a word character. You can see that, oh, I didn't get what I wanted. Do I have to make this longer? No. We don't need that word character, realistically. Um, but for some reason, it didn't get me. Oh, I need to put it in here. Okay, so essentially what we've done here is in our action, we're going ahead and looking and seeing, do we find .html in here? And if we do, then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and first of all, we're going to say action equals string replace. And we're going to replace the matches zero to blank inside of our action. So what that's going to do is it's going to remove the .html from it. And that would change if we had JSON here. It would change if we had just JS. I mean, it's going to find anything here. So we're going to go back to HTML. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that our format equals our matches one. Because you can see the one is the HTML without the dot. And we're just going to pass our format in here. So reload. And that's working, but the thing is, if we take off that .html, then the format variable doesn't exist. So what we'll do is we'll just come to the top, and we'll say our format equals um, HTML by default. And it only changes if this is found. So we'll reload, and you can see this is working. We can come back. Now, it could be nice if we could just say welcome.html right here. Um, but I don't really want to do that. I don't really want it to, um, oh, I don't really want it to try to find the, the format right here. So, uh, what we'll probably do in the next video 
is um, we'll probably try to set it up so that we can come into our roots and we can do stuff like this. We can say like map resources or resource and we can just put in our welcome um, our welcome controller. And the reason for that would be is because if we go to Ruby or Rails 3, um, oh, it would be like roots. We should hopefully find the guide right here. Rails does this thing called resources. So uh, singular resources right here. Where if you change it, like right here, if we define this is a resource and here is our controller, then what you can see here is that if you go to just controller, oh, let's just see. It, it just sets it up so you get all this extra stuff. And we're going to look into this. But basically what it would do is that in our... What we would try to set it up, if I can go back to it, uh, right here. What we would do is if we set this up as welcome, we would come in here and we would say that we're going to have a new function called new. And this is when when creating a new, um, oh, what do you call it? Just This is where we're creating a new database. Um, record and we create another function we'd say create and actually create the record and then what we do is um, when we go to edit then show the edit form but when you actually um, post to it or put, that's when you use the put method, then uh, we'd actually use the update function and act, um, update the record. And the last one would be when you go to delete, it would run the function destroy and delete a record. So you can see when we, what I want to have it set up was we create a resource and it automatically dynamically makes these work. It sets it up where when you go to welcome forward slash new that we can start creating a new record. And when you actually post a form to just welcome forward slash welcome, it'll automatically run this function. So it'll basically recreate what Rails does that's just so useful because it'll make all of these run pretty effortlessly. So uh, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully I haven't confused you with all of this because it, it took me a while to get my head wrapped around it and I'm not sure that I've explained it very well. But uh, hopefully you'll actually kind of learn from this and find it pretty useful and hopefully you'll kind of like what we're creating. So uh, thanks for watching this video and goodbye.